Welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church. Healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Ashley, and I am so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, pen, and paper, your phone, however you want to take notes, and get ready for today's message. So, we are going to kind of look at a, a, a verse in the Bible, a passage, a, a very long passage in the Bible today. I don't normally preach out of the Old Testament a lot. We are going to do a couple series out of the Old Testament today, or, or this year. But today, we're going to look at the book of Joshua. And in Joshua 4, 6, and 7, I'm just going to read the last part there. It's talking about them crossing over the Jordan River. The, the last part of 7, it says, And when they passed over the Jordan... The waters of the Jordan were cut off, and they put these stones for the people of Israel as a memorial forever. And I'm going to take some time today, and I want to talk about these stones and the memories that they placed and why they created these memories for the children of Israel. Is that all right today? Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that you would open the eyes of our understanding, that you would enlighten us to your truth that you would show things to us, you'd show us things to come, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, this may be an abstract thought, but have you ever looked at the uh, months of the calendar and wondered where the names came from? Some of you might have, most of us probably not, but I did, and it took a little bit of research to kind of find out where the names of the months came from, because if you think of the name October, Octubre, Oct should be eight, November should be nine, December, Deca should be 10, but they're not. December's 12. And where's, why is January and February now the beginning of the year and all these different things, right? So it wasn't until Julius Caesar became Pontifex Maximus that he reformed the Roman calendar so that the 12 months were based on the Earth's revolution around the sun. January and February were actually months 11 and 12, and he placed them at the beginning and made them months 1 and 2. It's pretty cool. I like hearing a little bit about history. But the name January comes from a Roman god named Janus. Look at this image up on the screen. A Roman god named Janus, protector of the gates and doorways. And Janus is depicted with having two faces, One looking into the past, and one looking into the future. Now, besides the whole Roman God thing, that's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool concept and idea of taking a moment or taking a month, taking the beginning of the year, and looking in the past, and saying, what have I accomplished? What have I done? What was great about last year? And then taking some time and saying, hey, let me have a plan for what's coming ahead. What should I do for the new year? I'd like to take some time today and look over this passage in Joshua about them creating memories in the past so that they could look back and remember what God has done for them. Now this is a long passage, it's 24 verses. So bear with me, it'll be up on the screen behind me, read along. When all the nations had finished passing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, take 12 men from the people, from each tribe, a man, and command them saying, take 12 stones from here, out of the midst of the Jordan, from the very place where the priest's feet stood firmly, and bring them over with you, and lay them down in the place where you lodge tonight. Now, I can only imagine these were not little stones like this. I can only imagine that these were like huge pillar style stones. And he says to them, put it up on your shoulder and carry it out of the water, like carry it out of the the bank. I think these guys had like some superhuman strength. So Joshua calls 12 men from the people of Israel, whom he had appointed, a man from each tribe. And Joshua said to them, pass on before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan and take up each of you a stone and put it on his shoulder according to the number of tribes of the people of Israel that this may be a sign among you. When your children ask in time to come, what do these stones mean to you? 
Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off so that these stones shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever. And the people of Israel did just as Joshua commanded. And he took up 12 stones out of the midst of the Jordan according to the number of the tribes of the people of Israel. Just as Joshua told them. Just as the Lord told Joshua. And they carried them over with them to the place where they lodged and laid them down there. And Joshua set up 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant had stood. And they are also there today. They are there today. For the priests bearing the Ark stood in the midst of the Jordan until everything was finished that the Lord commanded Joshua to tell the people, according to all that Moses had commanded Joshua. The people passed over in haste, And when all the people had finished passing over, the ark of the Lord and the priests passed over before the people. The sons of Reuben and the sons of Gad and the half-tribe Manasseh passed over armed before the people of Israel and as Moses told them. About 40,000 ready for war passed over before the Lord for battle to the plains of Jericho. On that day, the Lord exalted Joshua in the sight of all Israel. And I love this when you obey God. When you obey God to the letter, to exactly what he's leading you to do. Even when things don't seem rational to other people around you, you obey God. And God exalted Joshua in the the sight of all Israel. And they stood in awe of him just as they stood in awe of Moses all the days of his life. And the Lord said to Joshua, command the priests bearing the ark of the testimony to come up out of the Jordan So Joshua came in and the priests, come up out of the Jordan. And when the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came up from the midst of the Jordan and the soles of their feet lifted up on dry ground, the waters of the Jordan returned to its place overflowing its banks as it was before. The people came up out of the Jordan on the 10th day of the first month and they encamped in Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. And those 12 stones which they took up out of the Jordan, Joshua set up at Gilgal. And he said to the people of Israel, when your children ask their fathers in times to come, what do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know. Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan until they passed over as the Lord God did in the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we passed over, so that all the people of earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. Amen. Amen. Long story. Hope you paid attention. Hope you were there. Hope you didn't zone out. Pretty much, they set up a memorial. They set up these stones that they could tell stories of the greatness of what God has done. Now, let me ask you a question. We're going to switch gears here, but it's going to make sense, I promise. Can you right now think of the happiest moment of 2022? Your happiest moment of 2022. That's a little hard, isn't it? Hey, wait, come on, I'm on the spot. Man, like a lot of things happened in 2022. Now, unless you had a kid or bought a house or got a puppy or something like really big, memorable, and because you're all a little sleepy still, it's kind of hard to think of something great and amazing and magical that happened in 22. So if someone asked you that, hey man, what's a great memory you have of 22? What are most of us going to do? Hold on a second. You're going to pull out your camera roll. You're going to go album, year, 22, and you're going to scroll real quick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Oh, shoot. Remember? Oh, you got to see my puppy. Right? Because we set stones. We set memories in our phones so that we can look back and we can remember the great things that have happened throughout the year. Most of you would have to go on Facebook and see your memories on Facebook that you uploaded for the whole world to see, right? Come on. I'm going to ask you, like, do you tell your kids stories? 
Do you tell them the stories of like family stories? Family stories of maybe where God intervened? Family stories of what grandma and grandpa did when they were young and how they came to this country and made a life for you? See, stories are important. Memories are important. It's important to be able to look in the past and see where you came from, but not get stuck in the past. Also having a vision for what's coming ahead and where you're going for the next year. Because I'll tell you this, I'll be darned to repeat last year. I ain't going to live that year over. I'm not going to live that year off emotionally, spiritually, socially, <laughs> physically. Come on, somebody. But I'll tell you, I'm trying to jump ahead of myself. The day that the Israelites crossed over the Jordan River into the promised land was 3,600 years ago. And it was the most important day of Israel's history. And God commanded, he said, set up stones that we can remember this. And not just you, but your kids and your grandkids and your descendants, that they can look back and they can remember the story of where God brought them out of slavery into the promised land. After crossing over the river, Joshua set up 12 stones in Gilgal. Joshua 4.9 mentions that Joshua set the, also a set of stones in the midst of the Jordan River, under the water, as a memorial to where God had stood and parted the water. This is important to have significant memories so that later generations of Israel could ask their parents, what does this mean? Parents, it's important for us to have some answers about our faith. And when your kids' faith are challenged, they say, what does this mean? That something can come up out of us and say, here's what the Bible says. Here's what the Bible says. We need to remember the signs that God has done things in our lives, the mighty acts of work that he's done in our lives. And there's two ways that we do this. There's two ways in our Christian life that we look back and remember what Jesus did for us. The first act that we do as a Christian to remember what Jesus did for us is water baptism. Water baptism. Water baptism is identifying with Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. We are actually literally identifying with Christ. We're remembering the sacrifice that he made for us. Outside of salvation, water baptism is the second most significant event of a Christian's life. I'm asking you this year, maybe you've never been water baptized. Set 2023 as a date to be water baptized. Some of our staff members are in our college taking Bible courses. And uh, this younger generation doesn't own actual Bibles, like leatherback, paperback Bibles. They have it all digital. They have access to everything on the internet. I like to pride myself on having a, you know, a nice leather Bible collection. I got different types of Bibles, different translations of Bibles. And so one of them was asking me, they're writing a research paper. They needed to know some history of the book of John. And, you know, I'm, I am a genius, but I just, it's just not on the top of my head all of the geographical data of the book of John. So I walked into my office and I grabbed the Bible and I set it down and, and the staff's like opening it, they're going through it and they're like, oh my God, this is crazy. Because not only are they looking up the study guide data, but they're seeing all my personal notes that are written in the Bible. They flipped to the front page and they saw that my mom and dad gave me that Bible in 1992 and then they erupt in laughter. We weren't even born yet. <laughs> and they flip to the back of the Bible. And I have goals. And I set a goal in 1997 that I would own a Christian nightclub. And by the end of 1998, I opened the doors and I had 350 people on opening night. Yeah, I had a Christian nightclub at 19 years old. It was called Club Eternal. It was the first of its kind. Nothing had existed like that before. 
You come in, you dance to Christian music, smoke machine, lights, moving. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. Set a goal and it happened. I envisioned it in high school at 18 years old. And by 19 and a half, I was running a Christian nightclub. Sick. You thought I was joking, didn't you? That was a gag. But they could see in the back of the Bible, I would set goals. And when they were accomplished, they're like, yo, I want this Bible. I'm like, okay, I'll buy you one. They're like, no, 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 I want your notes. No, that's a joke. No, you can't have my notes. Like, I'll go buy you your own Bible now. You write your own notes. You write your own memories. You write what God spoke to you. And then when you go back and study it later, you can see what God spoke to you a year ago, two years ago. There's an importance, there's an importance if your kids pick up your Bible, that they see that you wrote in it. It does no good having a pristine Bible. If your Bible's not written all over and marked all up and underlined and highlighted, it's worthless. It's worthless. It was never read. It was never used. Write in it. Set memories. The first act is water baptism. Maybe you need to set that date in your Bible, the date that you were water baptized. The second way we as Christians remember the past and look back at what God's done with, through us is through communion. We're going to do that today. The act of communion is looking back to Christ, giving his life for us that we would have healing and have a relationship with God. Around this time, every single year, I challenge my staff. I tell them to go into their computers and delete old emails. Go into your computer, delete old files. Go into your, you know, my documents, delete some old stuff. Go into your downloads and purge it. Tell them to go to your phone. Back up your pictures, but delete some. Here's what I've realized in my household. Every two years, my kids ask me for a new cell phone. And the first cell phones we had were like two gigs. Then the next cell phones, we had to have 128 gigs. Now they're 256 gigs. They're like, no, we need 512 gigabytes on our phone. Like, yo, just delete something. No. See, it's great to be able to go back and look at the history in your phone and look at the pictures. But it's important to also make space in your memory. To go through and purge some old stuff that can just go. I mean, how many selfies do you really need? Uh, really, how many selfies do you need? Go back, delete some selfies. Just like delete the whole folder, right? Seriously, you love you some of you too much. Go delete the screenshots. Get rid of screenshots. You didn't look back at them. Go delete the screenshot of someone's book that they read that you never read. Like, just purge it out. Make room on your hard drive. Because spiritually speaking, many of us have been carrying too much memory around. We've been carrying too much junk mail. Wounds that others inflicted to us. Mental images that we've clicked. We're carrying around selfies of poor self-image. Selfies of insecurity. Not enough. Keeping record of every time we failed. Every time we messed up. We go back in that this year, just kind of delete some of that stuff out. But in order to delete it, we got to look at it. We got to deal with it. We got to sort it. We got to organize it. And listen, don't be afraid to organize that stuff into the trash. But here's the next step that you have to do when you organize something into trash you got to empty the trash. There's so many people, man, on their computer, they've got like 20 million files in their trash. Yeah, but I put it there. But I don't know if I really want to like get rid of it because if I, hit the, if I hit empty the trash, it's gone. Yeah, that's the point. That's the point. Some of you got to go in there and delete that hurt that someone inflicted on you. But I'm not going to delete that hurt because they didn't apologize, delete it anyway. See, forgiveness isn't contingent on apology. Forgiveness is not contingent upon apology. Forgiveness is a decision that you're going to be free from the situation. I'm going to be free from the situation because I'm going to delete it. And when I delete it, that situation no longer has power over me. I'm not only going to release you from the situation. I'm not only going to release you from, from the penalty, but I'm also releasing myself. I'm not going to be stuck in this. Because here's the truth 
You may be able to alter a memory image on Photoshop, but you cannot alter your past. You can't alter it. You can't change it. You can't change what happened. You can't change the decisions you made. You can make better decisions next year, but you can't change the decision that you made. But what you can do is you can file it, sort it, and deal with it. Deal with it. And make new room. My son the other day says, Dad, I need a new phone. Now, my son's nine years old. I said, you ain't got a new phone. Dad, I need a new phone. Why well, I need a new phone, son. I can't download any more apps. I said, well, son, how many apps do you have? Like a gazillion. Like 10 pages of, like, games that he has on his phone. I was like, well, son, let's just delete some games so we can make room for new games. You see, when we don't delete some things and we don't deal with some emotions and we don't deal with the past, there's no room for new joy-filled experiences. There's no room. When you build a vault around old memories, it doesn't allow new loves and joys and emotions to enter into that because you got it vaulted up. You got it closed off. You know what happens? The more things you have stored in this hard drive, the slower you run. The slower you run. Your computer runs slow because all the random access memory is filled. It's called your RAM. The RAM is all filled with all this data. You got all these windows open, got all this stuff saved on your desktop. Your computer's running slow. You got to purge the RAM. You got to purge your RAM. Random access thoughts, right? Random thoughts that pop in your mind that ruin your day. Random fits of anger. I heard a study. I heard a study that it takes seven hours to chemically recover from one fit of anger. A fit of anger in your life releases endorphins and, and um, I don't know, all these other chemicals in your body. And it takes seven hours to get back to your base level. Think about that. Yo, I can't let anger ruin my day. I can't give anger seven hours. Are you kidding me? I got to deal with that random thoughts, those random things that are coming to my mind, that random access. Remember, I can't give it access. I got to delete some stuff. I'm looking into the past. I'm going to remember it. But I'm going to sort it. I'm going to deal with it. And I'm going to delete some stuff. And then I'm going to have a vision for the future. That's what Janice, January is. Now I'm going to have a vision for the future. I'm going to have a vision for next year. What boundaries, what guardrails am I going to set in my life that I don't repeat last year? Right? Come on. There's some, there's some diabetics in here that you just need to go for a walk and stop eating sugar. Like for real. For real. Don't just, don't, don't just like lie to yourself and say, well, I'm just going to take one more pill and I'm okay. Enough of that. Go for a walk. Set a boundary, set a guardrail in your life. Take responsibility for your body and your health. Come on. Make a decision. Make a decision that no one intimidates you this year. Enough of codependency. Enough of walking on eggshells around someone because they get angry. I don't want to set them off. Listen, you say something that sets somebody off and they start going off on you, get up and walk away. Get up and walk away. No one gets to do that. No one gets to do that. Listen, no one can make, so for the person that deals with anger, no one can make you angry. Well, they just pissed me off. Oh, they're going to trigger me. Grow up. Grow, no, they can't. No one can do that. You are emotionally unhealthy, and you're making it everyone else's problem. You are telling everybody else that they are the reason for your anger issues. Hey, listen. Deal with it. Deal with the things that are setting you off. And it's not other people. It's you. It's you. Surrender that to the Lord. Surrender. Don't carry that into 2023. Dear God, hey, listen, look, can I talk to dads? This is out of my heart. Because listen, I had to deal with this. Dads, if you control your family with anger, you're teaching your kids to marry abusers. You're raising codependent children 
who will marry abusers, who will marry alcoholics, who will marry people who treat them like garbage because you modeled that in your home. And I love, listen, I love you. I love you enough to walk alongside you in that journey to get healthy. You're looking at one of the most angry people ever when I was young, and I brought it into my marriage, and I would just get angry, and I would just yell at my wife, and I'd shut her down, I'd manipulate her. I was great at it. And I realized that I was hurting people, I was hurting my kids, I was hurting my family. Come on, that's, we're better than that. God didn't make us to be like that. So we can look in the past and say, yeah, I did that. I was like that. And you know what? If, if I'm 5% if I'm better next year, I made an advance. Right? I don't have to be perfect, but 5%. We're going to take a moment today and take communion. And we're going to look back. We're going to look back at what Jesus did. Because of his sacrifice, we are now free in him. Because of his sacrifice, we have a relationship with God through him. Because of his sacrifice, we have eternal life through him. We're going to take a moment looking back, remembering, and looking ahead dreaming. And here's what I'm going to tell you about the word dreaming. I love to dream. I would get in trouble in school because they say, you know, Mike McKelvey is great in class, but he just daydreams. You know, they catch me looking out the window. and I wasn't just looking out the window, man. I was in my headspace. I was writing stories. I was climbing trees. I was building forts. I was like in all of the places in my mind, but in class learning math, right? And I love dreaming. I love dreaming what if, wonder if, could we do something new? But simply dreaming is not enough. Dreaming must be accompanied by action. We need to act on our dreams. The dream gives you the faith to see it. But your feet give you the power to live it out. Right? We've got to use our feet to walk out our faith. We've got to do the things we're dreaming, pursue. Somebody in here, man, you've been dreaming of having a rental property as a second income. Man, do something about it this year. Let's do something about it. Let's talk. Let's see who's got connections. Let's set up rental properties. Come on. Let's just stop talking about one day this magical hypothetical that's going to happen. And let's take some action into the dreams that we want to do. We start by looking back. Where have I come from? What have I accomplished? What tools do I have? What am I great at? Remembering and looking ahead. We're going to take a moment. We're going to look back. The Bible says that Jesus gave his life for us as a ransom, as a payment. That he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. In, in another translation, it says we were healed, which means we can look back and see that healing was provided 2,000 years ago. That all we're supposed to do today is walk in healing, walk in divine health. And we remember that. We receive it. Go ahead and take your communion out. Father, we thank you for this bread. We remember the healing power of Jesus Christ that is available to us today. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the Holy Spirit that can remind us of our healing, that can remind us of our health. We break this bread, remembering that healing is the children's bread, and we receive it into our bodies in Jesus' name. Jesus took a cup at the Last Supper and he passed it around and said, this is my blood that has been shed for you for the remission of your sin. The remission of your sin means the washing away, the covering, the, the, the caring for, so that we could have a relationship with God. There was a problem. There was a sin problem that separated us from God. It, it was a veil that hung between us and the access to God. And when Jesus died on the cross, this veil was torn. It was opened up that we could have access to God. And that's what this blood does. It washes us white as snow. None of us are perfect. None of us could stand in God's presence without the blood of Jesus Christ forgiving our sins. But today, we have access to God because of the sacrifice that Jesus did for us. Jesus, we remember your shed blood, the remission of our sin, that we could have a relationship with the Father. We thank you for making this sacrifice for us and we receive it in Jesus' name. 
Now, maybe looking to the past is a painful endeavor for some. Maybe you've been through some really rough stuff. Maybe 2022, you lost someone real dear. Maybe you lost a dream, a hope, a relationship, marriage, a kid, an animal. And just to think about looking back in your past almost seems unhealthy, and I can understand that. But I want to tell you this. If you still have breath in your lungs, then you made it through. You made it through the challenge. You made it through the battle. You made it through the war. You made it through last year. Which means this. The things that the devil tried to make as stumbling blocks to knock you down, you can now use as stepping stones. You can now build a foundation upon the things that did not tear you down. You may have accidents and falls and mistakes and misfortunes that devastated others around you, but you're still standing. You may have walked across the Jordan River and you didn't drown. You went through the wilderness and you didn't starve and God was with you, providing for you. You're still standing and you decided to show up on the first day of the year and dedicate it to the Lord. You're starting off right. You might have shown up today a little tattered, torn, tired, weathered. But we stand on the brink of possibility of 2023. No one has lived this year yet. No one has lived this time. No one has lived this generation. We get to write the script along with the Lord. We get to write a new chapter in the book of our lives, in the book of our soul. We get to decide what this chapter is and what it means and how it's lived. Who you were last year can be buried and gone and you can choose to be a new person in 2023. Let no one hold you to who you were yesterday. No one gets to do that. No one gets to throw your past in your face. No one gets to do that. You start afresh today. What does the 2023 you look like? What do you sound like? What do you dress like? How do you act? What are you going to accomplish? How do you treat others? You decide that today. The first day of the year. You decide it. And then tomorrow you live it. And the next day you live it. And the next day you live it. And the next day you're going to mess up. And then the next day you, you live it. Maybe today, you need to make today a time stamp. Just like the stones that they can look back, maybe today you need to make a time stamp. On January 1st, 2023, I decided to take control of my life. I decided to take control of my health. I decided to take control of my spiritual journey. I decided to be loving and peaceful in my home. You make the decision. Maybe you don't have your leatherback Bible with you today, but maybe when you get home, you write in it. January 1st, 2023, maybe set a goal. Set, set a promise. With something that's going to happen. I'm not talking about New Year's resolutions. They suck. I'm talking between you and God. What's something that has to change? What's a goal? What's a dream that you want to accomplish? Somebody needs to go ahead and do the thing that they've been talking about for a long time and get it done. I'll tell you this. If you have a goal that you have set over five years and you've never done anything about it, just abandon it. Let it go. Start a new one because you ain't going to do it. Now, if you're a negative reinforcement kind of person... That just inspired you to prove me wrong. If you're a positive reinforcement person, you said, oh, thank God, because I really was never going to go do that. Okay, so now let's create something new. Something that is in your wheelhouse. Something that is in your passion. And go after it. Father, I thank you today. 
that your word would penetrate our hearts and into our spirits and it would encourage us for what you have in store for us for this year. Help us to submit to your anointing, to your calling, to your leadership. Help us to hear your voice. Help us to know, God, that you are proud of us. I, Lord, I just pray that people would hear that. That they would not walk around in shame and guilt wondering if they honor you. Let them know that you love them just the way they are. That you're so super proud of your kids. And then help us to take steps in the right direction of your calling and your plan for our lives. I thank you that the plan and the purpose of our lives will become crystal clear this year. We could step in the fullness of your glory. You would lead us beside still water for your namesake. Let goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our life. Help us to dwell in the house of the Lord. Help us to dwell in your glory. I thank you, Lord, that you would look down from heaven, you'd smile upon us, you'd be gracious unto us, and you'd give us peace. For we are blessed coming in, and we're blessed going out. Everything we set our hands to will prosper and be successful. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I love you. Happy New Year. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today.